Have you ever wondered what some of the famous CEOs around the world are carting home every year? Well, sit back and get ready to be wowed as we bring you a list of some of the highest paid CEOs in the world. They have the top position, the luxury of jetting around the world when they want to, fancy offices, and everything that being part of the wealthy has to offer. Well, let's check out who they are. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that post notification bell so that way you don't miss anything that we put up there. Satya Nadella. When Steve Ballmer left Microsoft, Microsoft Core in 2014, Satya Nadella took over as the CEO of the company and as one of the highest paid ones in the world. Earning more than $40 million, Satya was first the president of Microsoft's cloud computing platforms, and he is known as the man who brought Microsoft's database, Windows Server, and their developer tools into the Azure cloud. This generated a revenue of more than $20 billion in June 2013. Finally, he got rewarded for his efforts by rising to the ranks of CEO in February 2014. However, Sonya wasn't done with revolutionizing Microsoft just yet. In his first year as CEO, Sonya acquired the gaming inventor of Minecraft, Mojang. Then in 2016, he bought LinkedIn and moved on to GitHub in 2018. Ever since that Satya has taken over the company, Microsoft's stock has tripled in value with an impressive average annual growth rate. He's also received several awards, including the India Business Leader Awards in Mumbai and Global Indian Business Icon, David Zaslev. David Zaslev has been the CEO of Discovery since 2007 and carted home a whopping $45.8 million in 2019. We all know how much television is bringing in the millions, and David's one of the many CEOs earning a tiny sum from this industry. Born in New York, David attended Boston University School of Law and then went on to work as an attorney for a while. Luckily, he had discovered early enough that this wasn't his career path and switched to working for NBC Universal. He was there for about 20 years working as the president of cable and domestic television. David was in charge of content distribution, including controlling channels like the History Channel and the Weather Channel. Finally, he made the move to Discovery in January 2007, where he became the CEO of the company. Just a year after he had assumed the role, the company started trading publicly for the first time. This is one of the many huge impacts that he has made on the company, and in the last 14 years, since he began his professional relationship, he's also helped Discovery to get live rights to content from the PGA Tour, and it's quite a lot. The Discovery Channel is known for its numerous popular programs, including for in Planet and Planet Earth. Then, David launched Investigation Discovery, one of the fastest growing cable networks in the US, and had a huge appeal to those who loved murder mysteries. He still has a lot of fantastic ideas, and every year keeps coming up with a new surprise. Miguel Patricio. Can you live without Kraft Heinz mac and cheese? Almost nobody can. And the man who is currently the helm of the great company, Miguel Patricio, earns a whopping $43.4 million. Despite the fact that he's only been the CEO since July 2019, Miguel has worked hard in reshaping the company's portfolio and repositioning it among huge global brands. Originally, there were more than 50 separate business categories, but he downsized them to all to just six consumer platforms. This is one of the best decisions as he is effectively taking the company towards a stronger growth direction. Before taking over as CEO, Miguel was occupying a senior position at Coca-Cola and Philip Morris. He also had many marketing positions since 1998, a testament to his level of experience in the industry. We look forward to the magic that he still has left to create at Kraft. Lisa Su, the current CEO of Advanced micro devices is the first woman on our list, Lisa Sue. She got to this position through her sheer hard work and a ton of experience. Now, you may not have heard so much about this company, but you certainly have come across their products, maybe even used them at some point. Lisa earned more than $58 million in 2019, and we can all agree that this is a lot. Born in Taiwan, she left for the United States at just three years old with her family. As a young child interested in math and technology, her parents understood early enough and fostered her learning when she was just 10 years old. It was quite a regular thing for Lisa to take apart her brother's radio-controlled cars and then fix them back anew. This was a talent that just couldn't be ignored, and eventually, Lisa attended MIT, where she studied electronical engineering. No doubt about it, this is one of the hardest engineering courses out there, and she aced it. She later would go on to get her master's and then PhD. Lisa's first entry into the business world was as a technical staff at Texas Instruments, where she worked for a while before moving on to IBM as the vice president of Semiconductor Research and Development Center at the company. During her time at this company, Lisa made several innovations and got duly recognized with a promotion to the role of technical assistant to the CEO. Finally, she became the director of emerging products, took some more years of working in different companies before she finally landed a role as general manager of advanced micro devices. At this semiconductor company, Lisa was instrumental in developing computer processors. Her work ethic caught the attention of the management and she became the CEO. As the overall head of the company, Lisa encouraged diversification and expanded the scope of the company, which included overall sales. 
skills. And so far, she's been nothing short of amazing, and we all know that there's more still to come. Sundar Pichai. With the $208.6 million that Sundar Pichai ranked in 2019, this stirringly huge amount is enough to break the record for the highest amount paid to a CEO anywhere in the world. This is what Sundar earns as the CEO of Alphabet. This is the Google parent company, and knowing how huge that this company is, it's not hard to believe that they could pay their CEOs this much. Sundar attended the Indian Institute of Technology, where he ended up getting a metallurgical engineering degree. He then got his master's from Stanford and proceeded to his MBA at the University of Pennsylvania. Back in 2004, Sundar started working at Google as a material engineer. He made a huge impact in the production management and innovation field, with his impact felt at the Google Chrome product. He was also crucial to important innovations in Google Maps, Android, and Gmail, making him a big deal at the company. Finally, Sundar became the CEO of Alphabet in 2019, and he brought his thoughtfulness and empathetic character to his role. With an approval rating as high as 96% from his employees, the stats speak for themselves in how well he was able to relate with others and move the company toward a stable work environment. Bob Swan One man who has worked in pretty much every role in the tech industry is Bob Swan. He was the CEO of Intel and Tekil a couple of years ago, a role which he got in January 2019. In his first year as CEO, Bob earned a fantastic $66.9 million. This is more than enough to afford a super expensive lifestyle, and of course, Bob enjoyed this. However, he didn't put in the work to be able to get to this position in his career. First, he spent a couple years at General Electric, where he moved through dozens of senior finance roles. Bob spent about 15 years in this position before finally moving on to become the CEO of General Electric Transportation Systems. However, his rise to the top of the company wasn't over yet, and this amazing professional became the vice president of the General Electric Medical Systems in Europe, then the vice president of the finance, and finally SFO of General Electric Lighting. When Bob was ready to move on from the company, it was only fitting that he would be able to be the SFO of eBay and then operating partner at General Atlantic. He was also the SFO of HP Enterprise Services. You can say that Bob did a full sweep of most of the big companies in the tech industry before he became the CEO of Intel, taking over as interim CEO for his predecessor, who he resigned. He became a full-time CEO in 2019 and finally resigned in February 2021. Lockham Murdoch. Currently CEO of Fox Corporation, Lockham Murdoch got a total compensation of $42.1 million in 2019. As a man who was born into an affluent family, Lockham got his bachelor's degree in philosophy from Princeton University. He then flew to Australia at 18 to be able to train at the Daily Mirror. Since then, he's steadily worked his way up to the top, showing that he's more than a rich kid who had everything handed down to him. Shantanu Narian As CEO and head of Adobe Incorporated, Shantanu Narian earned about $39 million for his total compensation in 2019. This figure ends up putting him at one of the top paid CEOs in the world, especially as it's more than enough to fund a comfortable lifestyle with his family. With annual revenue more than $11 billion, it's kind of not hard to see how well that he's run Adobe since he took up the position. Shantanu grew up in India, where he got his bachelor's degree in electronics and communication engineering. He then got his MBA from the University of California in Berkeley, where he relocated to the United States. Luckily, Shantanu landed his first job at Apple, where he made a huge difference before he became the director of desktop and collaboration products at Silicon Graphics. In 1998, he got another offer that would change the trajectory of his life forever. It was a job from Adobe, and he went on to become the senior vice president of Worldwide Products Research. Shantanu ended up taking the role of CEO in December 2007, and has held on to that position ever since. Bill McDermott The CEO of ServiceNow, which is a popular software corporation, is none other than Bill McDermott, and he earns a pretty penny from being in this position at the company. As of 2019, his annual compensation was well over $40 million. When Bill was just 16 years old, he got Deli Gourmet in Long Island. This was his first business, and it was purchased for about $7,000. He later studied business management at the Dowling College to be able to help him navigate the business world better. This was an excellent move, as it added more to his wealth of knowledge and contributed contributed to his rise in the industry to the role of CEO of ServiceNow. So there you have it, folks. Those are some of the highest paid CEOs in the world. Do you think that they're being overpaid, or do you think they deserve to even earn that much given their impact on the companies? Let us know in the comment section down below, and until next time, guys, we'll see you later.